Hi, I'm David Harris, the CEO of the American Jewish Committee, and I'm speaking to you from the heart of Brussels, the European Union zone. Right here to my left is the headquarters of the European Commission. Just opposite me is a, a monument to Robert Schuman, one of the founders, and I'll talk about him in just a second. Brussels is not only Belgium's capital, it is the European Union's capital. It's also the home of NATO headquarters. And since 2004, it's been the home of AJC's Transatlantic Institute. Now, why does all this matter? Well, very simply because after the Second World War, the question became, how can Europe prevent future wars, especially between France and Germany? And along came two distinguished French diplomats, Robert Schuman, the foreign minister, and Jean Monnet, his deputy. And they came up with what became known as the Schuman Plan, which was announced on May the 9th, 1950. By the way, since then, May the 9th has become the annual day for Europe to celebrate the process of unity. And that plan spoke about beginning to integrate the German and French economies around coal and steel. By 1951, the European coal and steel community had been created. And in addition to France and Germany, Italy, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands joined. That was the beginning of what has become known as the European project. Six years later, in 1957, the Treaty of Rome was signed, and those six became the European Economic Community. And also, the Atomic Energy Commission of Europe was established. Each was another step in the process of trying to integrate Europe. And of course, over the years, the six have now become 27. Some people focus on the economics of the European Union. Some people focus on the bureaucracy. I choose to focus on something that I believe is far more defining for this entire project. And that is that it has been the most ambitious and successful peace project in modern history. This continent over the centuries has seen more war, more conflict, more blood, perhaps than any other continent on earth. And Lord knows the Jews have paid a very high price century after century for all of those conflicts. Today, among the 27, even if there are political conflicts, they don't turn into war. They're resolved peacefully. And that augurs well. Does that mean that all Jews are now safe and protected? Well, yes and no. They're better protected than they were, to be sure, by the European Union. But anti-Semitism has resurfaced, and that makes the fact that the EU, just a few days ago, launched an ambitious new effort to combat anti-Semitism and to promote Jewish life. And it took place in this building right here to my left, led by the Vice President of the EU, Margarita Skinas, with whom an AJC delegation just met a few minutes ago. That too, we hope, all goes well. And finally, fine, some people will say, well, that's good for Europe, but why does this really matter to the rest of us? Well, first of all, it matters to the transatlantic relationship because it's essential for the United States to have stability, peace, democracy, and prosperity in Europe. And Europe becomes our most natural partner in trying to engage with some of the major issues of our time. But there's another angle that AJC has been trying to promote and that is, are there lessons from this project in Europe that could one day be applied to the, Europe, to the Middle East? Just as this project began with coal and steel, could we begin to see in the Middle East projects revolving around energy, the environment, climate change, electricity, that begin to bind Israel and its neighbors more closely together, create more interdependence and more of an incentive for peace rather than the prolonged conflict. Now we begin to see the seeds of peace starting in the Middle East. And so we think there are lessons from here, from the legacy of Robert Schumann and Jean Monnet and what's in ensued that can be applied one day to the Middle East. That's why AJC comes frequently to Brussels. That's why we established an office here in 2004. And that's why we continue to be a believer in this effort called the European Project. Bye-bye from Brussels.